Our first guest is a person that has an excellent chance of winning against what I view to be a, a, certainly a corporate Democrat. So I wanna to welcome to the show, Chardo Richardson. Chardo, great to have you here. Thank you, sir. It's a wonderful opportunity to be here with you. Thanks, man. Um, so you're running in Florida's seventh district. Uh, I, I want to get to your background in a second, but Chardo, um, you've got an incumbent that's a Democrat in your district, Stephanie Murphy. So uh, I think a lot of the establishment people would ask, um, "Hey, uh, why bother running against a Democrat?" Well, just because a Democrat's in the seat doesn't mean that that's the person who should be in the seat. We need individuals representing us in Congress who are warriors who are committed to the people and committed to the people's agenda and not corporate corporations agenda or the wealthy's agenda. We want people in our Congress who will speak up for us. That's the way our Congress was intended, at least the House of Representatives is to represent the people. And just because you have a D in front of your name doesn't make you immune to a challenge and it doesn't mean it's your seat. It's actually the people's seat in my opinion. So, but what are the policies that Stephanie Murphy has, um, you know, supported that you think are particularly problematic for progressives? Supported? I, I don't know. Well, I can't say I don't know, but I think it's more concerning what she hasn't supported, which is Medicare for all, which is huge. You know, she's very into these small businesses, and that seems to be her mo. But the small businesses will benefit from things like Medicare for all and protecting dreamers and bringing a clean dream act. But we're just not seeing that. For example, with the appropriations bill was the perfect opportunity to use your voice as a Democrat and say, you know, we're not gonna vote for it or pass the appropriate bill to fund the government unless there's a dream act tied to it or any other policy that would have been good for us like net neutrality if it was possible. Um, or protections on social security and Medicare, those kinds of things that we need. CNN's got you at a, at a pretty good chance to win here, uh, which is great. I mean, I don't, I'm not wedded to CNN's opinion on it, trust me, right? But, it, but if the establishment mainstream media also recognizes it, I think that's a good thing. So let, let's talk a little bit about what you did before you, you got into politics, uh, and, and it might give people a sense of why. Uh, everybody thinks you've got a decent chance of winning. Before I got in, I was I was in the military for 12 years, just under 12 years. I joined in 2000. Um, I participated in Iraqi Freedom and in, um, Operation Enduring Freedom. I was an air crew member, uh, traveled to many different countries, and then decided to get out and head to law school. Uh, once I finished law school, I immediately started working on things like mass incarceration. Um, and wrongful convictions while I was in law school. I would do felony juvenile interviews. I would do um, any, any kind of help I could give the public defender as a volunteer. And uh, after completing law school, I decided to become my own advocate. So I started advocating for the end of mass incarceration. And that led me to the ACLU where uh, locally, where I became president shortly thereafter and was over four counties. Lake Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County. Orange and Seminole make up my district. Orange makes up a portion of my district. Seminole includes a larger portion of my district. And uh, I also, now I work as a director for the teachers union. I've been very involved. I've, I've served my community, whichever community I've lived in, uh, from Big Brothers to, to Habitat for Humanity, mm -hmm. to mental, to teaching folks, who were recovering from any kind of vice, how to get their GED, tutoring, those kinds of things. You know, we've got the war on drugs, it, it, it funnels people into this uh, prison system, sometimes private prisons, but oftentimes state prisons as well, local prisons. So um, what's your solution to that? Um, so is it, is it just to end the war on drugs? What would you do with the nonviolent uh, drug offenders that are in prison? I'm curious about what your take on that overall is. I think the solution is that we end the war on drugs, that's our start. We also get rid of these for-profit prisons in this whole for-profit system. Um, we can take all of that money that we're wasting on the war on drugs and look into rehabilitation for things like the opioid epidemic. 
Um, but marijuana crimes, we should just do away with. We need to legalize marijuana across this nation, truthfully. One, it helps individuals who have certain um, health issues. For example, veterans with PTSD would benefit from uh, a medical marijuana, those kinds of things. Um, but to end mass incarceration, we definitely start with the war on drugs. We need to get rid of the for-profit prison system. It's it's abusive and it, it definitely um, adds to the problem because they're paid for beds, just like with uh, immigration, you know. There's the mandate by Congress that so many beds must be filled and that's a problem. The end to mass incarceration would be huge for us as a people because then we're no longer destroying communities. We're no longer destroying families. We're then having a workforce, a individuals who can provide for their families. And that's what we need to do, in my opinion. So Chardo, I think that progressives have been beaten down so much over these last couple of decades with money drowning politics and corrupting politics that they feel like things are not possible. So when you talk about ending the war on drugs across the country and then actually liberating all those people who are nonviolent uh, drug offenders, who are actually at at most have a health issue. Um, I, I think that people, unfortunately, now think like, "Oh, that's unrealistic. We can't really accomplish any of those grand progressive goals, can we?" And so, what do you say to that, Chardo? There is nothing impossible. There, it's 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 only impossible because the establishment has told us it's impossible. But it's not impossible. We can have a situa a system where we're not incarcerate, incarcerating the most people of any other nation. We can we can fix that issue. I mean, we we have over two million people in prison in this country, and it's possible. Other countries don't have two million people in prison. Um, China has more people in their population. They don't have more. They don't incarcerate as many people as we do. So that that's it's not an impossibility. I don't believe anything is impossible. That document, the Constitution, and the other documents that go with it um, were possibilities. They were they are they were outlined to control our government, and they had nothing to do with corporations. They had nothing to do with individuals taking seats and then holding them. They had nothing to do with two parties deciding what can and can't be done. It was a government of the people, and it starts in the preamble: "We the people." And I'm not. I know I'm preaching to the choir. We all understand this, but the truth is, nothing's impossible. Um, we, we can change all of this, and we're seeing it with the elections that are going on as of late. Yep. Uh, and we need to put people in office that are gonna do just that. So uh, Chardo's running in Florida's 7th District, and, and whenever we uh, talk to candidates like Chardo, you know that you could always find a way to help them in the, in the links in the description box below. So if you're in that district and you wanna volunteer for Chardo, that's great, that's enormously helpful. Uh, if you know he's not taking any corporate PAC money, so if you want to do small dollar donations, it makes all the difference. While his opponent is uh, getting a lot of corporate PAC money, uh, so keep that in mind and, and, and check out those links. Charter, one more thing, I, I, I don't know this. What, what's Stephanie Mur Murphy's position on fifteen dollar minimum wage? Is she in favor of it or no? I believe that she said she's for a raise, but not fifteen dollars. I don't, I don't, I don't think she is. I, I don't quote me on that. I just feel like if progressives win, we can actually change people's lives. Uh, so seven dollars and twenty-five cents is fifteen thousand. Fifteen bucks, like they make it seem like it's impossible, it's impractical. That's only thirty thousand dollars, a little over thirty thousand dollars a year. So uh, I, I believe that it's, it's got to be possible. Charter, you're for fifteen dollars. I am for fifteen dollars a year, or excuse me, fifteen dollars an hour. There's individuals that work in the Seminole County public school system that make less than fifteen dollars an hour. Some of them make ten. Um, these are individuals that serve our children, and we can't even pay them uh, a decent wage. It's it's there's nothing wrong with fifteen dollars an hour. It doesn't hurt anyone. It actually helps us because that money is then spent on in the community and on small businesses. And it lifts us all. I mean, why are we why are we okay with working poor, full time jobs, people working full time jobs, and still being poor and still needing? Um, we are a prosperous country, and we need to show that. We need to be that, and it's possible to do that. So, yeah, uh, it's, I'm for fifteen dollars an hour. That completely. And I'd like to add one thing 
Today, uh, some of my friends that I used to work with in the civil rights and civil liberties fight, I got a text that a few UCF dreamers were outside of Stephanie Murphy's office today and they're on a hunger strike. These individuals, I'm going out there to see them tomorrow to talk with them because they don't like her response to dreamers. So we need Congress people, Congress individuals in Congress who are for dreamers and support the things that most Americans want, not the things that the wealthy or the corporations want. Yeah, uh, most of all, we need people who are gonna fight for us. And uh, and that's certainly the sense I get from you, Chardo. Uh, so if you uh, wanna help Chardo literally keep the lights on, <laughs> give give a little bit of donations at the links below. Uh, and, and thank you for fighting for, uh, for us uh, literally when you served in Iraq and Afghanistan, when you served at the ACLU, and hopefully soon when you'll serve in Congress. Thank you, Chardo. Sure.